Welcome to another edition of the NCBI podcast. I'm June Tinsley, Head of Communications and Advocacy with NCBI. Mm. And today I have the pleasure of having a, a, a chat with Roisin Lenehan. So thanks very much, Roisin, for joining us on the chat today. Thank you, June. Yeah. Great, great, great. Um, and for our listeners' benefit, Roisin is based in Mayo. Um, and she's going to have a t- talk to us today about her experience that she's had in Knock Airport uh, on, as part of the customer service team. Um, and we'll kick off with, I suppose, if you could tell our listeners just a, a little bit about yourself, Roisin. Yeah, so my name is Roisin Lanahan. I'm based in County Mayo, as June already told you, and I'm 21 years of age. I am completely blind. Um, when I was born, um, I was, um, I had white eyes. So at first they thought, like the staff at Mayo General Hospital, which is now known as Mayo University Hospital, um, thought that it was cataracts. So when I was 12 days old, I was transferred to Temple Street Children's Hospital. Um, where I was seen there by Professor Michael O'Keefe and um, he diagnosed me with aniridia and glaucoma um, just in case that no one ha- knows what aniridia is it means that um, you have no iris um, so yeah then when I was very young I got a detached retina in my left eye and unfortunately there was nothing that they could do to save the vision in that eye Um, not that I had a lot of vision um, but unfortunately whatever vision I had I lost it due to the detached retina Um, I've had over 80 surgeries in my life and they've always all been on my eyes apart from one because when I was born I was both blind and deaf so um, when I was very young I had um, grommets put into my ears and that helped my hearing so (laughs) I'm no longer uh, deaf and my hearing is now perfect. I have two brothers and two sisters. Um, I'm the youngest in the family. And can I ask, Roshi, in terms of your siblings, um, if you if you were the the baby of the family, um, how did they uh, manage to in- include you in kind of childhood games or um, just I- interactions, um, given your vision was so poor? Um, they took me on quite well. I didn't feel like they were leaving me out or anything. Like, I used to play football, like the GAA football with my local club in Charlestown. I played that for, well, I was under eights and under tens. And like a member of my family would be like, you know, running around the field with me um, just to make sure that, you know, I wouldn't get a whack the ball or that you know I wouldn't run into something yes Um, yeah but yeah and plus I got like I I used to have about 10% vision in my right eye so we got a bright yellow ball that I used to that my club let let me like play with so um they just took that in like they let me bring the ball to training every week and they would play with that Apart from, like, they don't always include their own balls as well, but, yeah. And they I suppose that, and did, you know, did you, um, were, were you in the local national school, similar to your brothers and sisters? I was, yeah. I went to lo- my local national school and secondary school. Great. And was that a positive experience for you? Um, yeah. Good. Good, good, good. Um, and I suppose it was, it was probably helpful for other pupils in the primary school and secondary school just to see how things can be adapted for pupils with low vision. 
yeah exactly like um I actually went to two different secondary schools I started off in the secondary school in Charlestown and then I moved to St Louis in Culture Mall. and when I was in St Louis in Culture Mall, I actually gave some talks to um the students there in the school um just making them aware of what it's like to be blind yeah um, I done the leave answer applied in Culture Mall as well and part of leave answer applied is you have to do like project and at the end of the project an examiner comes in to interview you and um, I done one in um, one of my subjects was um, social aid where yes. it's more so on about the news but I done mine in awareness about blindness yes I done like a workshop with some students in my school and um just trying to make the everyone aware about what it's like to be blind and, yes um the examiner was really impressed with my project and everything that went along with it that um she asked for a photocopy of my project to show at a conference of like with all the other examiners um because she wants to show like what barrier what achievements can be achieved and barriers what barriers can be broken um so that was really good and even the school were really amazed with it as well that you know they've never had that you know for an examiner to ask for a photocopy to be yes so you were basically so that, best in yeah. class, yeah, which is great. Um, and yeah. as you said, Roisin, it, it's only really through um, those opportunities where the examiner would inform other examiners that um, people can break down barriers around yeah. what it's like to, to live with um, vision loss. And I suppose that brings us on to the question now of you're um, involved with the NCBI's local advocacy networks and um, particularly the, the employment one and can I ask what drove you to, to join those uh, that local advocacy network? Um, I like trying to you know improve things for people yeah Um, I might not be <laughs> outgoing or like I might be a bit relaxed at times about getting things done but um yeah, I like to try and improve things if I can or help people if I can um, on trying to get things done. And I know how important it is like to try and make things more accessible for others who might be coming up behind me. Exactly. And have you found the participation in the, the local advocacy network valuable to, for you? Um, yeah so far it's going well I've only um I only signed up to become um a facilitator there in January so I've only um facilitated one meeting yes. which is the employment um LAN which I am a facilitator along with um another service user and um yeah, the two of us worked together on the employment land. So I facilitated the last meeting there in February. So that was my first meeting to be a facilitator. And yeah, so far it's gone well. And I suppose it gives you an opportunity as well to kind of um, hear what's happening in the employment space that NCBI is working in and kind of influencing that as well, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, yeah, it's good to know what supports are out there and what the WIP was doing and everything. And I suppose for the, the benefit of the of our listeners, the, the WIPO um, staff are the Workplace Integration Partner Officers. Um, yeah. And they're the staff that are um, tasked really with forging stronger links with employers to make sure that uh, they have um, accessible recruitment practices and um, are more 
um, aware of adaptations that may be required when hiring people who are blind or vision impaired and yeah. the, the ease of hiring people who are blind or vision impaired and seeing them as the um, untapped resource that they are. Uh, and I suppose having your input, Roisin, and, and the others of the participating in the employment access or the employment network um, certainly will hopefully increase the volume of uh, employment rates amongst people who are blind or vision impaired. Yeah, oh yeah, definitely. And tell us a little bit about your own work experience in Knock Airport. Yeah, so um, I don't even sort applied as I mentioned there earlier and Another part of the Leave and Sit Applied is you to go on work experience every Friday. So one of the work placements that I done um was I done ten weeks at um our local airport here in Knock or in here in Mayo, uh called Knock Airport. Um I will just say that um there is uh, some people who might get confused and think that Knock Airport is in Knock itself but it's not. It's in the middle of the countryside about 10-15 minutes away from Knock. Um, so yeah it's I went there and I was doing I was working with the customer service team and I got to do a whole range of jobs um so any job that the customer service team do they got me to sample it as well so that was like um one of the main airlines that the customer service team had was um that they would look after is flyby even though i know they're not in business anymore but they used to have three flights going in and out of knock airport um, which was Edinburgh, Manchester and Birmingham. Right. So um, the customer service team would look after the check-ins and the boarding gates um, for those three flights. Uh, along with um, Aer Lingus, they would have um, one flight daily to London Gatwick. Um, so... They'd be the main airlines apart as well as Ryanair. Um, yes. but they'd be the airlines that the customer service team would look after is Flyby and Aer Lingus. And then um so yeah, there was the check in and the boarding gate. Um they would help if someone arrived at the airport and was flying in or out of Knock Airport, they would provide assistance to any passengers who require assistance um whether you're blind or visually impaired or you know you're in a wheelchair or whatever the yes. case may be they'd provide assistance to you um as knock airport is a private owned company airport it um has a 10 year old departure fee so the customer service team would look after that as well. And um, just they'd answer your general queries if you rang up or you if you rang the airport or you were at the airport and you wanted to know something. Um then yeah, what, they'd help you as well. What was your favourite part of the duties that you were involved in? Um probably doing the check-in and the boarding gate because you're interacting with the passengers and um yeah I suppose probably the the boarding gate would be the hardest because you kind of have to get a bit harsh to the passengers if they're late yes <laughs> um but yeah and did you have any um days where you thought oh god this is just not for me Too many now. If the flight got cancelled or well, um, then yeah, you would have the the odd disgruntled passenger. Oh, I'm sure. <laughs> but yeah, no, it's grand. 
Well, congratulations on it. And is it um, uh, an area of employment you'd like to pursue? Yeah, I hope to get into working in an airport somewhere in the future. Um, so hopefully that will work out for me. Great, great. Um, well, best of luck with it. Um, Thank you. And, and I suppose just in terms of um, being based in in Mayo and in quite a, a rural area, um, how do you feel around uh, public transport and navigating public transport being blind? Um, public transport? Well, I'm not in a walking distance to a bus or a train station. So, well, like a bus stop or a train station. Right. So the only downfall there is I have to rely on someone to like drive me to or to and from the bus stop or the train station. Yes. Um. Generally, if I was to choose the bus, yeah, that's fine. Um, I have had one or two journeys that haven't been great, but um, yeah, I <laughs> wrote to bus Aaron about that, and I think they've dealt with the issue. So, but you know, I've travelled on the train a lot, and I. Yeah, I feel happy enough traveling on the train. Like, um, right. yeah, the trail staff are very helpful. I just contact them the day before and say that I'm traveling and, you know, tell them what times I'm traveling at. And they, I've never, more than likely, 99% of the time they've had someone there to help me on and off. And if there was no one there, then... I have to say the train drivers are very helpful. Um, you know, if they knew that I was on the train and they were again I'm and like they'd know where I was getting off, they always kept an eye out to make sure that I got off or they'd be like they'd jump off the train themselves and come down and be getting me off the train if I needed help. Um Brilliant. And the same for getting onto the train, like whoever was dropping me off and if there was no staff there. If I went up to the driver, which I would recommend to anyone with a disability, if you do need assistance on to the train and there's no staff there, go up to the drivers, tell the driver that you're getting on that train, tell them that him or her that you need assistance and they will help you or if you prefer for your family member to help you on, let the driver know and just say, can you wait? until this person gets off and yes they will um i've never had an issue with irish rail so that's really heartening to hear about you to be honest and i suppose um not everybody has had such a positive experience but yeah exactly reinforces the point though that if you had a um disappointing journey and you'd subsequently wrote then to bus Aaron or dublin bus um and sought the situation to be resolved and they did, it really raises the um, value of people um, contacting the bus companies uh, in order to get issues resolved, which yeah. um, reinforces the point of, uh, of advocating for yourself and to be empowered to be, to be advocated um, so that issues can be resolved. Um, and I, I, I say fair play to you that uh, you've had such a positive experience with Irish Rail over the years, which is great. And I suppose um, the last question I have for you, Roisin, is really just in connection with um, what one piece of advice would you give to an, another person who is just uh, a, on their journey of, of sight loss? Um, just do the best you can and don't be afraid to ask for help. And if there is anyone out there that you know, might be over helping you, um, then I know it's easier said than done but just say look you know I'm okay with doing this but if I do need help I will let you know and most of the time like people are you know quite good at you know stepping back um, if you say that to them but yeah and plus you know it's not always easy to talk up for yourself but you will get there. And I, I suppose, as you rightly say, some people um, are more reticent by talking up than, than others. Um, yeah, exactly. And just 
to encourage anyone who is interested in joining any of our local advocacy networks which are scattered around the country um, and yeah. it is an opportunity to meet like-minded people who are blind or vision impaired who are keen to um, put a spotlight on some issues or services that are uh, inadequate or discriminatory or just not working properly um, and yeah. working collaboratively to, to get the issues resolved um, and if anyone is interested in it they can feel free to email campaigns at ncbi.ie um, but very sound advice Roisin and uh, thank you for that and, and thank you for your time and um, I genuinely look forward to working with you more on the Employment Advocacy Network um, and best of luck with the, the job hunt in Knock Airport and uh, they'll be thank you. lucky to get you, they really will. Um, but for now I'll just say thank you very much and as usual if anyone is interested in accessing our services please feel free to call the info line 1-800-911-2 Five zero, or alternatively, jump onto our website ncbi.ie.